Praise Master Jesus. Praise the Lord. Woo! <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm so excited to be here again and um, having this great opportunity and the privilege to stand here. Glory be to God. On behalf of myself and my family, I want to say congratulations for stepping into today. Hallelujah. Tonight, <laughs> glory, 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 glory be to God. Tonight is a great night for every one of us. It's an exciting night. You know, um, there are many people that started the year with us that are not here with us today. But today you and I, we stand here. Hallelujah. 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 We have to thank our Father. Father, we bless your name. We thank you. We thank you for the course of this year. You've been a wonderful Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Excellent Father. Perfect Father. Holy God. We worship you tonight. We give you praise. All power belongs to you. All glory belongs to you. There is none like you, Father. There is none beside you. There is no rock as our God. We thank you. Thank you for seeing us through these years. Thank you for the provision in 2022. Thank you, Father. We are here once again, Father, rejoicing and celebrating in your presence. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are you ready? I want to say thank you all for this great privilege standing before you today to um, oversee this section. Uh, before I proceed, I just want to do some acknowledgement. Uh, I want to say thank you to Sister Flora, our wonderful, beautiful sister of mine. She's the best sister that I have in the world. You know, Sister Flora, she's the um, overseer of Etichrist Kingdom Ministry. She's more like the superintendent of this ministry. I want you to um, uh, help me thank God for her life, for her dedication for the kingdom of God. She's been an exceptional uh, partner with me. Uh, my relationship with her is phenomenal. Uh, we, we've, done, we've done a lot together over the years. And uh, we, by the grace of God, because of what God has given us in this ministry, we are just beginning. We have a long journey to go. Amen. Uh, another person I want to t uh, thank is Pastor Isaac. I want to acknowledge Pastor Isaac. He is the pastor of the only branch that we have for now, which is the uh, Antichrist Kingdom Ministry Uye Community. Hallelujah. He uh, is um, a man of prayer, humble to the core and is dedicated to the things of God. Uh, there is no one that I can uh, say that has been more effective than Pastor Isaac in this ministry. He's proven himself to be a dedicated person and, and inspiring to other people. Um, Pastor Isaac has been um, a brother and a friend to me. Uh, I would call him my in-law <laughs> because he's married to my sister. Flora, so she, he's, a, he's, he's a great person, he's a great man of God. I love him so much with all my heart, and I'm so privileged to be working with him. And that person I want to acknowledge is uh, Brother Frank. He's a member of the uh, Board of Directors of Fetty Christ Kingdom Ministry. Uh, he's very encouraging and supportive. I love his spiritual gift, his prophetic gift. gift. I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm so thankful for the privilege to be able to have someone like but of Frank in our ministry. God brought him into this ministry and is in this ministry to stay and is working with us and we are working with him and uh, we are all going to take this vision of this ministry to the next level. Hallelujah. Uh, for the other leaders in the church, I want to say that I know some names like someone like Pastor Azuka and Mrs. Azuka. I want to say thank you very much for being a part of our ministry. You make a tremendous contribution to the vision of this ministry. And I want to say thank you. Uh, to also uh, the men's leader and the women's leader, Mr. and Mrs. Osage, I have seen your dedication, 
your your commitment to the to the vision of this ministry yeah, you are committed not only in your attendance and you'll be a very great financial contribution to, to into this ministry i want to say thank you i'm getting the report of um, some of the activities that is going on in the ministry i want to say thank you very much for yielding your heart to the lord and i, I pray that god we bless you because we know that there is an anointing in this ministry when god called us he anointed us and that anointing will flourish in the life of everyone that anointing will prosper everyone that contributed to the vision of this ministry amen hallelujah um our staff i would like to acknowledge them sister josephine number one which is my my best and favorite elo <laughs> amen she's a dear sister to me i want to say thank you sister josephine and keep up the good work that you've been doing for the Lord. Uh, Sister Grace, I will not forget you. You are a member of, uh, of our staff, volunteer staff. I want to say thank you. I've heard so much about you, and let's ride on. I want to know what people in the community think about us. I want to know what they are saying. What they, what they are hearing about the ministry. Because at the time when Jesus sent out his disciples, when they came back, he asked them, what do men say that I am? Jesus wanted to know what people are saying. He wanted to know what people are saying about him. So uh, sometimes I do ask, and no, sometimes people just come and give complaint of what people are saying about the ministry. So I'm, okay, so I, want, I just want to talk about two, of, two complaints that stand out of all the complaining that they've complained in the ministry, I want to use this opportunity to address it. Uh, the first complaint that I heard, that what people are saying about us as a ministry, is I heard they said that we are a charity organization. You see, that may sound demeaning, uh, but it's not surprising because why we are preparing for the inception of this ministry I was sharing my vision to people sharing um, the things that God has been revealing to me the things that God wants us to do I was sharing it with people I was sharing with sharing sharing them with friends and families and people that could listen to me at that time one day God showed me a vision something that has to relate to something like this that I should be careful that people don't come and go after the, the, the fleshly thing and ignore the word. We are a Bible-believing ministry and we, we believe in the word of God and we teach. And we teach the word of God. But at least they are not saying that we are taking money from poor people and using it to enrich ourselves they are not saying that we are exploiting the poor that is not what they are saying about us at least they are saying that we are helping people so that is good that's the good news all right they're not saying that we are stealing from people we are ripping we are we are taking from poor people and we are using their money to buy cars and living living a lavish lifestyle so that is not what they are saying so if that not if that is not what they are saying that's fine all right, so we, should, we shouldn't worry with that. We should focus on the things that God wants us to do. Amen. I don't know why people have such perception, but one thing for sure, one thing for sure is God is going to allow people to talk. People are going to say something about us. It is publicity. So we shouldn't be worried when people try to say things that demean us. That, uh, all right, so we shouldn't be worried about that because that is how God advertises us. Look at us at the moment. We are not paying for TV station. We are not paying for radio yet. We are not even on act actively on the internet. So there got to be an advertisement. Some of the advertisement is critics. So when people criticize us, we should not allow this to hinder what God wants us to do. We should focus on the things that God wants us to achieve hallelujah so that's number one 
The second thing, the second one is very funny that I want to dwell a little bit on. I'm just said we are breaking people's marriages, and one of these, um, the the people that are saying this is some of the complaints are some of our brethren in church who are making this kind of complaints and. Um, uh, the news is spreading. I heard that the news is spreading in Oye community that we are, uh, this church, when couples go into this church, they divorce because this church breaks people's marriage. Hmm, is that true? Hmm. Before I I start talking about this. I want us to deal with this from the Bible. The Bible says that we should do good unto all men, especially those in the household of faith. But this kind of complaint is not new. It's not anything new. In Exodus, I want us to read Exodus chapter 2, verse 11 to 22. The Bible said that it came to pass in those days when Moses has grown, that he went up unto his brethren and looked on their bodies. And he spied an e Egyptian smitting an Hebrew. The Bible says that, you remember, you remember the story of the children of Israelite when they were uh, in slavery in Egypt. The Bible says that Moses has grown up he went up to his own people one day and while he was there he watched an Egyptian beating up a Hebrew man the Bible says that um, Moses a man that he heals I can see why God need, called someone like Moses the man that is full of compassion Moses is a man that is full of empathy. He cares about people. He loves his own people. Moses hates oppression. He hates to see people being oppressed, regardless of who, who is being oppressed. But especially when you, you, are, you are oppressing his own kind. Especially when you are oppressing his own kind. Moses is the kind of a person, a kind of man that will want to make a difference in the life of those that are oppressed. This is the reason God called him. This is the reason God uses him. This is, what some, this is something that God saw in the life of Moses. That made God call him. That made God use him in a tremendous way. Hallelujah. So what happened when Moses saw this? What did he do? He intervened. He killed the Egyptian and buried the Egyptian in the sand. All right. The next day, Moses went out again to check on his people, and he went there just to start on them, to check on them. How are they doing? Why he went there? He saw two Hebrew people, two Jewish people, two brothers. They were fighting, and one was beating another and the one that was beating another beating the other Hebrew man was wrong then Moses again a man that he is a man that is full of love a man that hate injustice a man that is full of compassion a man that is full of empathy he stepped in again and he said why are you hitting your fellow Hebrew why are you hitting your fellow Hebrew, why don't you direct your hunger to your oppressors? Why don't you direct your hunger to the Egyptian who is your slave masters? Does that look familiar to what we are seeing today in, 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 in the world? Does that look familiar? In our nation today, we have the political class, all right, the elites, the leaves above the law, all right. The leaves above the law, but the poor, they fight it themselves. For example, is what is happening in Ukraine today. You see the Russia, 
destroying, bombing, and blasting Ukraine. Russia want to take someone else's land, want to bomb them, drive them off out of their land, and take their land. You can imagine the Ukrainian, instead of them focusing their attention to fight Russia, but there are some Ukrainian, all right, that are fighting the Ukrainian. The same thing is happening. In Nigeria, you, you see the headsman goes into, I don't want to use the Fulani name because it's not full, all Fulani names. It's not all Fulani names, it's some headsmen. Not necessarily they really want to cause destruction to people's prop, uh, a farm, land. They want to feed their cattle because the government has not made a provision for them to raise their cattle in a modern way. They're not focusing their attention on the government to develop a good structure and a system, an effective system, an efficient system to grow their livestock. They go to innocent farmer, destroy their crops. All right, destroy their crops. What happened? Those farmers, some of these farmers are poor farmers poor, vulnerable farmer. They goes into the farm that they, the one that they cannot press. A farmer that cannot do anything. The farmer that cannot do anything. So this thing is a spirit. In verse 13, he said, he went away, he went on the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together. And he said unto him that did the wrong, the one that was wrong. Wherefore smitted thou that fellow? Why do you smit your brother? And he said, who made thee a priest and a judge over us? When Moses went in and said, why are you hitting your brother? This is your own brother. The oppressor, how did he, how did he reply? He said to Moses, who made you a judge and a ruler over us? Do you want to kill me the way you killed the Egyptian yesterday? Why did he do that? Because he's fighting back. He want to have his way. It's like Russia saying that if anyone interfere, I'm going to use a nuclear weapon. I'm going to use a nuclear weapon. If you interfere, we'll use a nuclear weapon to scare people away because some people, they just want to do their evil. They just want to continue to destroy others and they don't want anyone else to intervene. They don't want you to say anything about it. So this is a spirit, it's a demonic spirit that works in the life of people, it works in the life of the oppressed. Instead of channeling your anger to, what, to those that are oppressing you and, that, and bring deliverance to your own people, or demonstrate love to your fellow brother, walk, to your, walk with your brother united, united for success. United for progress, united for, to succeed. But what did they do? They fight among themselves. They fight themselves. They want to oppress. Now, you see someone that have a little bit of money and want to oppress somebody, someone else. Instead, instead of trying to raise people up, they become the oppressors. So they oppress me, I will oppress another one. Hallelujah. So this is not who we are. This is not who we are as a ministry. And this story, what they are saying is not true. We are not breaking people's marriages. Remember, um, Apostle Suleiman and um, uh, Mike Davis, it is his name of the pastor, Pastor Mike Davis, that accused Pastor Suleiman of sleeping with his wife. He went on the internet, a pastor who went on the internet to accuse another man of God that he is sleeping with his wife. And he knows that that was a lie. Apostle Suleiman said something. He said, when this brother came to him, 
to reconcile their marital dispute, he said to the brother, your wife is an adult. Let her speak for herself. I have no comment. You see, most people believe that because we are a church and the women that attend our church, we can use authority to get them to do what they don't want to do. They think that they can use us as a tool to control their wife. Not only the men, the women think that they can use the leader, the pastors, as a tool to make their husband do what they want. And there are also some men that also believe that the pastor can talk to their wife to become his slaves at home. That is not what we do. We have respect for people. We have respect for humans. We have respect for the right, God-given right. She have the right to say, this marriage is here. I'm not going in for now. I want to stay away from now. We don't force them. We can't force them into marriages. We cannot force them into marriages. Amen. The Apostle Suleiman said, no. Let her make that decision by herself. And he said something that, he said, but if I raise a daughter, you throw, that, you throw her out. And we take her in. That is what fathers does. And he said to him, once if you come to your senses, make peace with your wife. It's as simple as that. So if a man thinks that they can inflict pain on their wife financially financially cause them to go through financial difficulties because they want her to come back begging and remain slave and start worshipping them as God at home and someone step in and say no you are not supposed to do that we are not going to, we're not going to allow her to, to beg we are, not going, we are not going to allow her to suffer. We are, not, we are not going to allow her to be homeless. We are not going to allow her to starve, especially those with children. And we decide to step in. We didn't say don't. We didn't say don't make peace with your wife. That is up to you. We didn't say don't make peace with your wife. That is not what we say. But what we did as a ministry is to come and help as much as we could help. So that does not mean that we are the cause of the problem. We are, we are never the cause of the problem. And I want our, these men to know something that we as a ministry we are not going to stop doing that and we've not even started and I want them to join us to be of help to other people hallelujah my prayer is that they will come to their own senses and God will bless them and begin to be of help to other people, women you see I live in a country where women choose to remain in a relationship because they want to be in a relationship. Women are not in a relationship because of if I leave this man, how will my children survive? If I leave this man, how will I feed my kids? If I leave this man, what will I do? How will I pay my rent? How will I pay my mortgage? They don't think that. They don't think about that. Because as soon as the man walks out of the door, the government will step in. The government will pay them. The government will take care of them. But in Nigeria, we don't have that. We don't have that in Nigeria. So many women that die in a relationship. So many women are in a, in a relationship that they are not supposed to be in because they don't have choice. That doesn't mean that we, we, we are coming in to break marriages. No. But we came in to do the best that we could do. 
to minimize the pain and that we have no apology we are going to continue to do that hallelujah